on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Hiker and Layman, presented by Riverwind Casino. A lot of OU stuff to cover. Danny Stutzman's coming back. Caden Green's in the transfer portal. Sooner's got a commitment from Dion Burks. A lot to break down. And then we just have our winners and losers of the week. Please download and subscribe to the podcast. Rate it five stars and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right, our man Michael Hosty will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Wednesday, December 13th, and you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Layman, presented by River Wind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and there are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match, Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And to learn more about their gaming promotions and entertainment options in the month of December, all you got to do is visit Riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Now recording this on Sunday. That's not right. We're recording this on Wednesday morning. We do record on Sundays, though, but it's Wednesday morning for sure. Please leave us a five-star review and a nice comment while you're at it. Ted Lehman, how we doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. I cannot complain. There is a lot of OU football stuff to cover. So much OU content. My goodness. Now, we're trying to get all of our sponsorships for 2024 locked in. If you are interested, we got a couple spots left. If you're interested, please email the Oklahoma breakdown at gmail.com and we can get you all of that information. Do you want to start with positive news? Yes. Or ne- okay. That's what I was hoping you would say. Danny Stutzman, change of heart, announced that he will return for the 2024 season. There is a lot to unpack here, Ted. But let's start here. How significant is him returning for OU's football team? Uh, it's I don't know if you can really quantify how, how important it is, especially whenever you combine Stutzman with Bowman. And, you know, honestly, throw in Ethan Downs. You've got you got guys, uh, a guy at each level. I think those all guys came in the same recruiting class. Yeah. And they've played a bunch of football here. They've got a bunch of experience. How rare is it to have seniors that have played all of their football? They were recruited, signed, and played all of their football for one school. And like ultimately, that's what you want. That's how you develop culture. That's how you, uh, I mean, the experience factor, you're going to have the good communication at all three levels. I think it's, I think it's incredibly important. And that's before you even start to talk about the playmaking ability of Stutzman. Um, You know, I don't, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of what they do. You know, the search for Mike backer throughout the season really never settled on anyone. It was, it was a revolving door. Stutzman himself played there, Kobe McKenzie, Canick. Um, I'm curious to see if they play Stutzman at Mike and Kip Lewis at the will, and if that's what they roll with moving forward. I don't know how it's going to go down, but I know that having Stutzman there at the linebacker spot is going to be huge for this defense. And that's why I, I know that we're all – interested in the portal and all thinking about the sec next year and and wrapping up this recruiting class with national signing day being a week away i'm really interested to see what the defense looks like against arizona in the alma bowl yeah i I think that's going to be our first glimpse with what this linebacker core may look like next season I, i think you would roll out stutzman and kip lewis as your two inside backers but I don't know that with Stutzman at the mic and Kip at the will. We, we've seen it, but we also saw that combination go out there and the defense just struggle as a whole. So 
that is, that's going to be something extremely interesting. Is it a situation where BB looks at it and goes, you know what? Maybe Kip could be our Mike backer. I, I don't know, yeah. but we're going to get our first glimpse of what this could look like next season with what we see in the Owl Mobile. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And hopefully, it, I mean, it felt like that began to get a began to be a tired defense down the stretch last, um, you know, during the season. I, physically tired, maybe more mentally tired than anything as you started to see more and more breakdowns. Um, hopefully they're able to refuel a little bit and go out there and play well, but I can't even begin to imagine what our defense would look like without Stutzman and Billy Bowman back there. I mean, not only is it a bulk of your, of your tackles and your playmaking, just the, the leadership, again, the communication aspect of it. I mean, those are the guys that have played the most football for you by a wide stretch and having them back there. It's a total game changer. Again, I don't, <laughs> I, I had to entertain it a little bit, but just thinking about, and I know like, it happens everywhere. And the more that like young guys will get in and they'll develop and they'll, you know, be able to pick up and, and get better and better and, and, and gain experience and all those things. But it's hard to think about, you know, without having your main experience at both levels, linebacker and safety. Yeah. And that's just what they're doing on the field, on the practice field, on, and then on game on game day. But it, this is the thing I don't know. I, I don't know how you measure it. You have, in Stutzman, you've just got the emotional leader of the team back. And I, I just don't know how you quantify the effect that has on the rest of the guys in that locker room, especially the young guys during the offseason. That, that may be the most valuable thing that Stutzman brings because he is now that guy's made some all has made some all American teams, right? He's very vocal. He's a very in your face type of guy. And he's the guy that's going to set the standard for pretty much everyone else in that locker room. And he's made a lot of plays. He's being highly compensated, which is now part of this conversation at college football. And you just have, you have this tone setter. So you start thinking about, yes, the Alamo bowl. We want the defense to go out there and shut down no Fafita and play at a high level. There's, there's no doubt, but you start thinking about winter workouts and, and spring ball and, and summer workouts and training camp. But Stutzman is going to be the guy that sets the temperature of the room. He's the thermostat for the football team. And that is, I, I don't even know how you measure how important that is. Well, it's its incredibly important. And I, you're right. I don't know how you measure it. I guess you measure it by wins and losses next year. Um, you know, I, I, the only thing I, and I don't worry about this, but it's something that you have to think about as long as, his he attacks the offseason the same as he always has, which I wouldn't expect that to change, but you you've got some labels now, as you said, uh made some of the what the second, third team all American teams. You get in a big NIL deal. I right, you've got a lot of other stuff going on, a lot of notoriety. I don't feel like you've arrived. Don't feel like you can't improve, like you don't need to improve. Um, as long as he attacks that off season, I mean, ultimately that's how you lead guys is, you know, holding yourself accountable first. And, you know, I, I got no reason to believe that he won't do that. So I, exciting times, exciting times. It's good stuff. Uh, very exciting. Now you are, I, I would say it is fair to say that along with the boss, you are one of Stutzman's mentors is that a good word for it yeah i guess so i and, and it was interesting hearing him talk about it after after practice on tuesday kind of what all went down are you going to tell us what happened 
What did you say to him? How did you convince? I'm convinced you had. I'm convinced you had a role in convincing him to come back. I know you're like, you're like a vault, man. You tell you, if you tell Teddy Lehman something and you say, do not tell anyone, it's like, it just gets trapped in there. It never gets out. So what, what did you do? Lehman? tell us. Well, first you have to tell me what he said. I have no idea what he said. I didn't see that. He basically said I had made the decision that I was leaving. And then uh, he told coach V just like our buddies over at Soonerscoop.com had reported. And essentially said, I, I talked to coach V one more time and then had a change of heart. I'm convinced <laughs> you planted some sort of seed. I don't know exactly what it was, but I'm convinced that you said something that really stuck with them. Well, I- I don't know. I talked to him for sure. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that to, to him if he ever decides to make any of that public. But yeah, I, I told him straightforward that if I were in his position, that I would probably, I would probably stay. I think he can play at the next level for sure. Um, but it's different. The NFL is different. And you know, I think that just watching him, uh, his personality and how much fun he has playing the, the game of football, I hold on to that as long as you can. Hold on to that as long as you can. And especially now in college football when they can uh, they can make it worth your time. So I don't know. I, I, I'm just thrilled that he came back. It felt like he was gone, you know, it, he never said that, but all the reports were coming out, felt like he was leaving. And uh, in true Stutzman fashion, with the with the video dramatics, he's coming back. What what did we think of the video? Wait, what was your initial reaction to the coat, the Corvette, uh, the airplane? What what did you what was your initial reaction to everything that was going on there? I mean, yeah, yeah, that's about what I expected it w- would be, right? Yes, it's we talked about it. it was like, <laughs> when, when it started coming out, when Suter Scoop reported all that stuff, it just felt like this was not Stutzman style. Like this, if this one way or the other, it was going to be real loud, whether yeah. he was coming back or he was going. And yes, this was. This was about, I think this is is about what we expected. Now, does it make it less cool knowing that this was filmed for the butt kiss semifinalist stuff and he ended up not being on that list? Does that take away from the video's effect at all for you? No, no, we don't have to talk about that. We can, we can, uh, that could be lost to history there. Um, I thought it was very cool. Uh, It's awesome. I'm, I'm, it's, it's cool to see the, the relationship he's built with Boz. There's a lot of similarities there uh, between those two guys, but um, I don't know, man. Again, thrilled for the guy. I think, you know, he's going to come back next year and he'll be probably a favorite on on some award list. He'll probably be a preseason All-American on some list. I, there's gonna, he's going to have some lofty expectations for himself. You know, you, to, you play yourself into that. You know, you better go out there and back it up. And as we sit here today, I've got I've got no no worries about him doing that. I think he will. And, and this is something we've talked about in the past, but being on those preseason lists goes a long way in you being on the postseason lists. That's right. It it shouldn't be that way, but it just is. Some people that vote for those things, they look, oh, who do I have on the preseason list? Oh, okay. Oh, they had great stats. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put them on my postseason list. That's just, that's how it works. So he, he I'm with you. I think he's going to be on a bunch of those preseason all American teams and, and he's got a great chance. If he has a fantastic season in the sec to really rack up some accolades, but, and I cannot believe I'm going to do this. He put out the pictures, right? Mm-hmm. There's only one issue I have. It, he has become the caption master. It's like him and Shea Gilgis Alexander. The, these are now the Instagram caption kings. And the caption of all those pictures with, I don't know why they haven't printed the t-shirts of him and Bosworth with the Corvette yet. I, 
I know that Opolis has tried already. <laughs> I mean, they're so Stutzman needs to give him an answer there. I, I feel like those would sell well, but the caption was Corvette because I see no challengers and the C in challengers is capital S implying that the plane behind him is a challenger, which it is not. That is a Learjet 45. Same mm. company makes them, okay? Same company makes them. But very different airplanes with very different price tags. Yeah. Am I plane shaming Stutzman in his Instagram caption? Maybe. Maybe that's what happened in here. But well, it, I'm just know, saying. It, it does say, because I see no challengers. There's not, you're telling me there's no challenger there. Whoa. You did it. Maybe, maybe I misinterpreted it. Did I? I don't think I did. I, you're right. There is no challenger. Know. You I nailed it. I guess he's saying, hey, you better upgrade me to a challenger. Uh, I'm taking the Corvette. No Learjet for me. I'm taking the, uh, I'm taking the vet till I see a challenger back there. Okay. I don't know. I like it. We're giving him the benefit of the doubt. Never mind. I'm backtracking. He's exactly right. <laughs> Captain's perfect. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Uh, last thing on the Stutzman thing. Cause we got some, we got some portal news to talk mm -hmm. about with Stutzman and Bowman back. Uh, how do you think this changes expectations? Not only for the Alamo bowl, but for what next season could look like for Oklahoma, because if those two decisions go the other way, I don't think we would have panicked on here, but the tone of the conversation would have been rather different. Yeah. Well, and let me say this, like, I, I think our safeties, the, that position group is excellent. Really, really good. Young athletic. There's some really good size there. Some guys that'll absolutely strike you. Uh, and you know, in the recruiting class coming in, as as long as we get those guys signed, I I'm really really excited about the safeties that we have, and it's the same thing with linebacker. I'm really I I love our linebacker group. We we are fast, we're explosive, we got some great athletes in that room. But I mean, in my opinion, the longer you wait before you rely on those guys, the better. And the more they can see top level play in front of them, the better. And if you're a safety in that room and you get to see a guy day after day on film, in drill work, in in uh, on field play, the more you see it done right, the more you emulate it, the better you become. If you're out there trying to figure it out on your own, and you don't have something to model your play after, it just takes way longer to get there. I mean, it does. You know, some guys will get it. Some guys, it clicks right away. But for the most part, the better play you have in a position group, the better the guys behind are going to become. And I, I, it's, again, it's hard to imagine where we'd be because, you know, there's still going to be some turnover defensively, but, Again, I, I want to bring downs into it, too. The fact that you have veteran guys that have played four years of football. They'll be playing their fourth year of football. Now, I know it's uh, they started in a different system, but I, that's rare. That is that is how you bring the culture of your program along is whenever you have seniors that spent all of their time at that program, not guys that are coming in as seniors as a one-year rental talking about guys that that have been there for the duration that's how you build your program and uh it changes the expectations for the defense for me dramatically i'm with you it's a it's an exciting deal it's a big deal and certainly extremely helpful that danny stutzman will be back in an ou jersey heading into a new era of oklahoma football the portal give it and the portal take it. Mm. But first, <laughs> Love's Travel Stops is now offering a nationwide 10 cent per gallon discount on gas and auto diesel. 
Just download the Loves Connect app and scan your barcode at the prompt on screen and watch that price drop 10 cents per gallon. Across the country, the Loves Connect app unlocks exclusive deals that can help any traveler plan their route or meal on the highway. So before you hit the road, be sure to download the Loves Connect app to save 10 cents per gallon and experience the country's best highway hospitality at Loves Travel Stops. Loves also has you covered if you forget your phone charger or headphones with their expanded mobile-to-go zone. And of course, don't forget to grab yourself some of that delicious Java Hamori. The land doctors have a 120-acre property for sale in East Norman, located just 10 minutes from campus. This completely wooded property sits at the intersection of East 120th Street and Tecumseh Road. If you're looking for a quiet place to go spend some time in the outdoors or a nice little hunting spot in the outskirts of town, this place is just for you. There are also development and business opportunities with this property. Call Colton Cole to schedule a private showing at 405 615 Seven six four five, or shoot him an email at Colton at LandDoctors.com. And celebrate with a Schooner All American Ale, the official craft beer of OU Athletics from Coop Ale Works. Named after the iconic Sooner Schooner that races across Owen Field after an OU score, you can enjoy an in on the celebration with an ice cold beer from Coop Ale Works. You can enjoy it at the Palace on the Prairie, at OU Athletics events, at the bar, at the tailgate, and in the comfort of your own home. For more information on Schooner All-American Ale, visit SchoonerAle.com. Must be 21 to purchase. Please drink responsibly. Schooner All-American Ale, the taste of game day. Transfer portal updates. Mm. Mm. It giveth and it taketh, and ooh, it tooketh. Dane Green entering the transfer portal. An absolute shocker. Uh, doesn't sound like from the people that you and I have talked to. Doesn't sound like any of the coaches had any idea this was coming. Doesn't sound like his teammates knew this was coming. Ted, I've got a lot of information on kind of what happened here, but I'm not even sure what to say as far as Caden, because I, if you would have said, give me a list of you guys that you think something like this would happen with, Caden Green and his personality, it would have been very far down the list. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's extremely interesting. Uh, we've talked a lot about the portal entries for OU this cycle and them not feeling like big, significant losses. Well, this one does. It feels big. It feels significant. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the type of player that he is and will be, you know, just finished. Well, I guess we would have had the bowl, but true freshman, all the signs are there that this is going to be a dominant football player. And the exact type of interior offensive lineman that you want going to the sec, right? That's the guy. That's the guy you clone, right? Give us all the interior offensive linemen that look and play exactly like this. And, you know, that's number one. The second part is, well, he leaves out. We were saying, okay, well, we're losing a bunch of guys off the offensive line, but at least Caden green, a seven game starter for you is coming back. Losing your left and right tackle, losing your right guard, losing your center. He was kind of that spot. And I know Sexton came in and played the end of the season at the at the right tackle spot and did good. But like really, he was your lone starter that was returning. And now he's gone too. Now, I'm confident that Beanbo and Venables are going to be able to to put together a solid group for next year. Don't know, exactly know what that's going to look like at the moment, but I'm confident they're going to do it. We've had a lot of success there, but I, I don't think we'll be replacing Caden Green, at least not in the near term. So uh, there's, yeah, it'll be difficult. You know, I've, I've obviously talked a lot about how excited I am about Caden Green's future and what I think he can be, especially as a guard. And 
you just don't see things like this happen around the country very often you see you see really good g5 linemen jump into the portal and create a bidding war amongst power five teams but we, we see that quite a bit you don't see a guy that just started a bunch of games as a true freshman for a blue blood program jump into the portal there's definitely something strange going on here and so maybe the best places to start is here. OU's NIL program is, is running pretty dang efficiently right now, especially as you compare to where they were at a year ago to right now, they have done, they have taken a very NFL style approach to the way that they're distributing NIL dollars. Right, They look at what are the most valuable positions in the National Football League, and they look at NIL valuations from multiple different sources. They've got their own people that are watching a bunch of the portal guys, and they kind of slot these guys. It's very organized. I, I've seen it. It's very organized. And basically, they've got a priority list. Clearly, Bowman Stutzman, very high on the priority list. Got that taken care of. Caden Green was very high on that priority list. And basically what I was told was that Caden and his parents uh, met with the people handling the NIL situation and they had some demands. And the collective was willing to meet those demands. Caden uh, met with BV after that initial conversation. And then kind of some of the, the the tone of the conversation kind of changed where Caden went to the collect people and said, I'm not signing for less than X. And the collective went, okay, discussed it. And they got to X. They got to the dollar amount that he asked for. And they sent Caden the contract. And this is where it gets really strange, man. The only reason anyone really knew that Caden Green was about to bounce was a staff member was driving by Headington Hall and saw him pushing a cart of his stuff to his car from Headington Hall and pulled over and was like, what's up, man? <laughs> like, what's going on? And from what I understand, he was like, you need to talk to my dad. Another staff member came over, had a conversation like, hey, man, collective got to X. You asked for X. We're there. What's the, what's the deal? He's like, well, I haven't seen the contract. Contract gets sent over. Staff member shows him the contract. There's X. It's on the sheet, buddy. You got to talk to my dad. Called his dad. No answer. It's weird, man. It's really weird. It feels it. I, there is a conversation. I'm going to, I, I, I promised I would not say the number, so I ain't saying it, but what OU's collective offered him, the number he asked for that they got to the contract with that number on, they sent him. I believe it would quite possibly make him the highest paid offensive guard in college football next year. And this is a guy that he played okay. He wasn't a dominant player. He was a true freshman that did some really nice things. They were about to give him a boatload of money, and a lot of it was based on like what you're going to be, which is part of how you have to handle all this stuff. But I find it incredibly hard to believe that there are a lot of schools out there giving an offensive guard more money for one season than what OU's collective offered Caden Green. So for everyone out there that's going, oh, how could we, how could we fumble the bag? Listen, man, I, it, it's a ton of money. 
for one season for an offensive guard. Clearly, there are some other things going on here. So I, if you want to be bad, bad at OU's NIL operation, go ahead. But the number that I know was offered is I – I there there could only be maybe a handful of interior offensive linemen in college football that would be getting more money for that that for for one season than that. Well, and the important thing is they gave him what he asked for. Oh, and not only do you get what you're asked for, you're being coached by you ask any NFL team. Give me your best offensive line coaches in college football. Bill Beanbow is going to be at the start of a lot of those lists. He's going to be the first, second, third name on a lot of people's lists. Proof is there. There's a ton of his players in the league and actively playing for a bunch of teams. I mean, it's. And, and Beanbow does not play the NIL game. It is not a conversation he wants to have. He pushes sure. that to the collective people That's who how got to the number that he asked for. Well, I don't know. It sounds to me like he got offered a huge number. They said yes. I, I when I say they, I guess I mean his dad said yes. Um, and I just so just so you know, his dad listens to this podcast because okay. he would message me quite often about what I said about Caden. Well, so Mr. Like Green, hey, come on, tell us what's up. <laughs> Here's your invitation to come on. Well, I I don't know from from that information. It sounds like I this is what I'm guessing. They got offered a big number, took it, and then took the number to OU, thinking that they would maybe scoff at it or not get there or whatever. And whenever they matched it, it didn't even matter because the deal was already done. That's what it sounds like to me based I, off of this, the story that you told, right? I, this is how everything was relayed to me that people were, that were heavily involved in these conversations. If you say I need to get to this number or I'm gone and they get to that number and you're still gone. It sounds to me like you already made the deal. It already happened. I, but I don't know. I, I, I don't I mean, know. I, I guess, I guess it's frustrating because. I, and I don't know, I'm not behind those, I'm not in the locker room, I'm not, I mean, I know how beating Bo coaches, he's tough, well, that's how coaches t coach, that's how good coaches are, I mean, you're I not going to find an offensive line coach in the no. country that's worth a shit, that isn't mean to you, demanding, absolutely, um, I, he, he played, now, I've heard people say, well, what if he wanted to play tackle? Well, they'd play him at tackle. <laughs> Bill played him at tackle all spring and yeah. all training camp. The reason he was playing guard was they felt good about the tackle spots with Guyton and Rouse, and they did not feel good about Savion Bird. So they put Caden Green at guard. It makes yeah. all the sense in the world. Get your best five on the field. Yep. And if, if you want to be tackled, play, paid tackle money, guess what? You got to play some tackle. You got to show us. Hey, let's talk next year. If you, if you think you're a tackle, you think you deserve offensive, you know, high-end offensive tackle money in college football, which just sounds crazy coming out of my mouth. It's still, we're still uh -huh. getting used to all this, people. But you have to prove you can do it. Playing it in spring ball and in training camp means nothing. Playing it on S it, on Saturdays in the SEC, you show you can do it then, then okay, let's talk. You will be compensated for the production. I well, here's miss the other me with too. the, oh, well, he wanted to play tackle. You're right. Bill would have moved him to tackle. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that simple. Easy. It's an easy conversation. Now, here's the other thing, too. Uh, and, and again, I, I'm only commenting off of what I've seen. I don't know the whole story, but – and and I hate this part of it because I love everything that Caden Green was about. That ain't I, how you negotiate. 
No. That ain't how you negotiate. That's how cowards negotiate. That's how cowards negotiate. If people who have invested a lot of time and resources and attention into making you a better player, into bringing you along and and uh, shoot, like making you a captain, like it, I don't know. There's a lot of people up there that invested a, a lot of time, money, effort into into trying to help him grow him into the best player he can become to where he can make uh, a lot of money in NIL across the country. And whenever you're having thoughts of leaving or feel like you're worth more, there's a way to have a conversation. There's a way to, to negotiate a contract. This is how cowards negotiate a contract. You make demands, the demands are met, and you turn your, turn your phone off, you turn your communication off. That ain't how you do it. At least that's not how I've ever seen anyone do it. It And it feels very out of character for Caden Green. That's the thing. That's what's str very strange to me. So I, I definitely think uh, there are other people that are more responsible for how this played out than Caden. And it sounds like their phones are turned off. So we'll, we'll see where he ends up. That that's the thing. I immediately I I talked to people at Mississippi State. Caden coming there? No. What the hell's going on? Do you know where he's going? I talked to people at Colorado. Hey, are, were you guys able to poach Caden Green? No, man. We we don't know what the hell's going on. We, we think he's going to Missouri. I talked to people at Missouri. Uh, uh we think it's Oregon. So. I don't know. It's it's a it's a strange situation, man. I the from a football standpoint, there's just no doubt. This is uh, this is a significant loss for Oklahoma. Now, do I trust Bill Beanbow to put together a really good offensive line? Absolutely. But this was a guy that I anchor. thought was going to be a leader. He's kind of a choir guy. Didn't say much, but I thought he was going to develop that. I thought he was going to become more vocal. Like it means a lot. You start as a true freshman. And this is why the week to week captain stuff. Don't make a true freshman a captain. They haven't earned it. Okay. I just, you, I was, you know how I felt about that at the time. And it's oh, nothing yeah. against Caden Green. Just no true freshman deserves to be a captain. But I, I'm not going to pretend that this isn't some big loss. This is, this is a guy that I thought was going to be an All-American level player in an early round draft pick. And now he's going somewhere else. We, we don't know. Maybe Nebraska? I, I don't know. But the way that this all went down was it was just it's strange and it's it, it's unfortunate and this is the first time something like this has happened to Oklahoma yeah well you know it, here's the thing like I'm I'm still pulling for Caden Green I think he's I think he's going to be an excellent player um I wish him all the success and I know he's going to have success wherever he goes um, I think he's that that type of guy. Uh, I don't know where it's going to be, but he, it seems to me, and, and again, I'm only operating off of the story that I, I heard. It seems massively disrespectful the way that it all went down, and that seems very out of character for him. And I don't know. I There's a right way to do things, and there's a wrong way to do things. And I just to just to turn your back, shut down communication on on the whole pro the program that uh, as much as they've done for you. I I just I don't I don't understand that, and I don't think it's coming from Kate. Maybe it is. I I don't know, but sounds like people around him and I. 
that to me is the worst part of the whole thing. I mean, come on. I, you, you show, you show nothing at all towards the, the program has spent a year working with you. I don't know. It's, it's frustrating. Again, that's how cowards communicate and that's how cowards negotiate. Frankly, they don't, they turn the phone off because they're scared to say it, man up and say it. I, this is my hope. <laughs> and maybe Caden Green ends up back at OU and we all go, this is awkward, but I, that, that would surprise me at this point with how this went down. But I, I, I hope he's getting a lot because, and if it's Missouri, if it was one of those things where it's like, Hey, I want to be closer to home. Not, and it's not like Kansas city and Norman are really far apart, but if you want to say that, but okay, they're giving me a ton of money. I get to live closer to home. I get to be closer to my family. Okay. But like you said, you, you just got to say it. Yeah. Just you just got to be up front. Hey, pick up the phone. Listen, I, I want to be closer to my family. I appreciate what you guys did. You made a good offer. Uh, got another offer out there. Want to be closer. Like to coach more. Like the uniforms that they wear more. I, you know, say something. I, there's got to be a little, little back and forth. And maybe they did. Like, I, I don't know. Again, this is just, this is going off of the, the information that I've heard. The way that it was told to me is it kind of seemed like he just tried to disappear without telling anyone. Which, that ain't it, man. No. And, and you and I, I feel like, and I feel like we have, we have absolutely acknowledged the type of loss this is for the football team with mm -hmm. what we've done here. But you and I are also the ultimate. If you doesn't want to be here, all right, see you, man. Especially for the number that they offered him. See you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, well, first, like, are you sure you don't want to? Okay, no. Then, yeah, no, right. it, there was definitely like, if he would have called me, I'd have been <laughs> like, no, please stay. What are we doing? But it is, yeah, and now these people are saying, well, you got to let Beanbow go now. Like, what? All the guy does is develop offensive linemen and put them in the NFL. I, I don't know what else you want, people, but. Yeah, especially whenever you're going into the SEC, whenever you have zero returning starters. Let's maybe hold off on uh, looking for a new offensive line coach. Yeah, especially one of the most highly respected offensive line coaches in the country. Right. Absolutely. I, that has a tremendous relationship with the new offensive coordinator. Yeah. I, sometimes I, I, I think people just don't think through some of these things. But there is no doubt the offensive line has to be addressed. I mean, there's just no doubt. So uh, you want to, you want to build that group with high school recruits, right. And develop those guys. But we've seen the Sooners dip into the portal the last couple of years and plug guys in. And you already got Spencer Brown coming from Michigan state. I we'll, we'll see how it all ends up fitting together. But as you start to look and even the Alma Bowl, you start looking at that game going, okay, who are the five guys going to be, but you start looking towards next year. Got to replace all five starters. Yeah, and it, that's the thing. Back to the Stutzman, Bowman, and Ethan Downs deal. Like, I have I have no doubt that Bean Bow and Venables are going to build a good offensive line, and they're going to add some really good players probably through the transfer portal. But it's not the same as whenever it's grown organically from your high school recruited players, right? And that's you know, you're seeing what, what Stutzman and those guys have brought. That's what you were hoping to get from Caden Green. Recruited, developed, anchor, cultural, uh, you know, piece for your football team, build the locker room. That's what you were hoping for with him. And the last thing, like, think about the dangerous, not dangerous, I don't know the right word for it, but the precedent that we've got going on right now. They have to get 
some type of legislation in place with the transfer portal. It has to happen. You should, you cannot continue playing this sport at this level where everyone on your team can leave after one year. You just can't do that. That's it's, it's it, it goes, it goes back to what Charlie Baker suggested with the new subdivision of division one. If they do that, then they can set a new rule. They that can set a new of, rule today, too, though. No, Remember, I hear you. It but, wasn't very long ago where you couldn't transfer and you you would miss a year of eligibility, and then one conference waived it, and everyone else was like, oh, my God, we got to do it, too, and everyone waived it. Well, you know exactly what will happen if they try to do it again. They're going to get sued into oblivion. Oh, you're restricting our, our earning potential. You know how it'll go. And Kavanaugh made it made it pretty clear. The NCAA will lose. <laughs> so I yeah. I don't know, man. It, this is the first one for Oklahoma where I saw it and I went, damn, that mm-hmm. that is painful. But you know, other other schools have been through this. I did this is just the first one we've had that felt. You know, like a gut punch that felt this significant and the portal giveth and the portal taketh, man. I, this is college football. This yeah. is college football right now. This is, this is how things work. It shouldn't work this way. I, and I'm with I, you. And I, and I know, like, and I know they're probably trying, but, you know, it's it's impossible to ever get anyone in agreement in college football because there's way too many schools and, like, the, it's so competitive that before you ever get anyone to agree on everyone uh, on uh, on things, everyone's like, well, you know, maybe the transfer portal's good for us, you know? It's been good for us the last couple of years. We, we kind of like it. We're going to – we want to keep it. I mean, it's – I don't know. It's tough. But at the end of the day, where does that money come from for these NIL deals? It comes from the fans. Where does that money come from that that gets pumped into the programs, the massive payouts from the networks? Well, that comes from the fans too, right? All of it in one form or another is generated by the people that are watching the sport. And if you poll the people watching the sport, I would bet 80% of them think the transfer portal sucks. Right. And until those 80% start to make their um, opinion heard, then it won't change. But when they do, it will change. I hear you. Let's move on to some more uh, positive portal news. (laughs) Uh, Deion Burks is fast. Woo. Uh, Arguably number one wide receiver in the transfer portal has committed to Oklahoma, 5'11", 195. Uh, This season at Purdue, 47 catches for 629, seven touchdowns with second team, all Big Ten. This guy can go. This is, and I don't know if this is a great comparison or not. Deion Burks is what I thought Mario Williams was going to be. I he's he's a, I think he's a little bigger, but you talk about yeah. the straight line speed, suddenness, elusiveness. This guy can go, man. He's got juice. I mean, there's just yeah. there's just no doubt about it. This is a hell of a weapon for Jackson Arnold to have next season if we can find an offensive line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I too I, soon. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, he he looks great. To me, I mean, he looks, I mean, he's not a huge guy, but he looks like he's like got some, like a real good physical build to him. They use, you know, you've seen him used in a bunch of different ways. You could throw the ball down the field. Uh, you can hand it to him on jets or reverses, um, you know, with the explosiveness, the speed, the athleticism, you know, I haven't been able to see like how sharp and of a route runner he is and how savvy of a guy he is, but I got to imagine he's pretty daggum good, a uh, super productive player. It, it felt like was ranked as 
some places had him as the number one or or close to number one wide receiver in the portal and and I I that's what it looks like on film whenever you watch him. He's that type of guy. And you know, it's the same thing. You got to be absolutely sick for a place like Purdue because as soon as you get a a talented guy that's productive and explosive and okay, we can build our offense around him, gone. Sucks. Sucks for the fans, sucks for the the staff, the locker room at, at Purdue, but it's what we got. Everyone in the country is angry and happy at the same time. Yes. <laughs> oh, OU fans, very happy to have Burks in the boat. Purdue fans going, why? Why? Yep. Uh, but Emma Jones continues to impress. Uh, with what the receivers looked like this season, the physicality that they played with, that edge that they played with, uh, He's doing great on the recruiting trail. That clearly includes what he's what he's doing in the portal, but it does create an interesting situation at wide receiver. Uh, I was starting to think about, okay, where does Burks fit? He definitely has the speed to be an outside wide receiver. But it got me wondering, is this a guy that could be one of the best slot receivers in the country? if you put him in what I call the Drake Stoops rule, uh, run, yeah. run a bunch of routes in the middle of the field, just completely dominate the middle of the field, which is what we've seen Drake do this season. And, and this guy, as much as we love Drake, uh, this guy's just a, he, he's a better athlete than Drake is. So if you put him in that role, what type of damage could he do? Seems like it could be significant, but, uh, and I know that Emmett Jones, he likes to have wide receivers that can play everywhere, right? That can play outside, that can play in the slot, but this is the type of guy that if you've got Nick Anderson and Andrew Anthony on the outside, you put him in one of those slot spots, watch out there. And maybe it's, he's on the outside and the Farouk's the slot guy. I, I don't know, but if it were up to me, I'd want to see what this guy looks like in the Drake Stoops role. I, I think he could just be an absolute menace of a route runner there in the middle of the field. He's he's your move guy too, right? Taking coming across the formation, um, motion in, motion out. Guy that I mean, I'm not saying he's uh, the same speed or but I, I like how Miami uses Tyreek Hill uh, in their offense. They hide him all over the place, and he's moving in and out, creating, you know, difficult places to to cover him. Like, you're always – you never get a – he's never, like, just sitting there, right? He's It's a moving target always, and I like that. And he seems like a, a type of guy that you could you could do those type, those kind of things with. The only way you can do that consistently is to slow down the tempo of the offense, though. Uh, you you yep. can't do a bunch of that stuff when you're playing fast, fast, fast. And we'll see what type of mentality uh, Seth and Joe John have on what type of tempo they want to play with. But if you're going to move guys and use a bunch of eye candy shifts, motions, that type of stuff to force the defense to communicate, just got to slow the operation down because it's it's impossible to do all of that stuff trying to snap the ball as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I agree with you. I feel like we've had this conversation a lot on here, but yeah, I'm excited about Burks. As disappointing as the Caden Green news is, uh, Deion Burks is a tremendous get out of the portal. And I did see some of the well, how are we going to get all these wide receivers on the field? It's pretty simple, man. You don't. This is what a competitive wide receiver room looks like. If you want to go make plays, you want to get paid, practice and play well. Bottom line. That's where I'm at with the wide receiver spot. Because you look at the room, there's a lot of talent in that room heading into next year. Right, Jaden Gibson, 
What well, is he going to take another step? He did some good things this year, but it's not like he's some established guy. Yeah. And that's where well, I, this is a very good problem to have. And I trust Emmett Jones to handle it the right way. I, I know this. If you don't block, you're not playing for that man. Here's, here's how I see it. This is not a one size fits all wide receiver room. You got, you got six, six guys, you got short guys, you've got route runners, you've got burners. You've there's, there's a bunch of different, you've said it before. Uh, it's like a basketball team, right? You got guys that can do different things, different skill sets. It's not a one size fit all wide receiver room. And it should not, you do not want a one size fits all offense. You should build your offense around skill sets of your players. And that's where I think Seth the trail and Joe John can really take advantage of it. I feel like we were in a one size fits all offense a year ago, right? Kind of the same concepts for everyone that didn't really change depending on the personnel. Like if you really want to get the most out of your players, you build offense, you build schemes around their individual skill sets because all of those guys are better or worse at different things. It all doesn't just line up. So I think it's a great opportunity. I hear you. All right, let's get to call your shot. We asked you guys the most important thing that happened for OU football this week. And I love this one. It comes from at CF Stan 82 who says Jackson Arnold's comments about the offensive coordinator hire and him saying with who OU hired, he knows he is in the right spot. Without him as QB one, our offense would definitely struggle, especially with the makeshift O line. There's so much going on that we forgot that a true freshman is about to start the bowl game, or at least I did. There's so much other stuff going on. It's like, Oh yeah. The five-star freshman is going to be playing in the Alamo bowl against a really good Arizona team that feels way down the list right now, but yes, it is. It's extremely exciting to think about and, and we'll break that day, that game down here. What ne next week, two weeks from now, when is that game? It's two, it's, it's in two weeks, right? Yeah. It's going to be coming on. us pretty quick here. We'll, you know, we'll do um, a preview episode like we normally do during the season for that one. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, we got to wait and see what our roster is going to look like. <laughs> no <laughs> before we kidding. Break down. That's what someone said. Well, you, how, you surprised the line hasn't moved? I was like, no. If you're handicapping the game, like, there's no sense in moving it around until you, uh, there's no sense in even betting on any bowl game until you know what the roster is going to look like. It's, Bet it's crazy. Betting on bowl games with the uncertainty. If you bet more than two hours before kickoff, there's something <laughs> wrong with you. You just don't know, man. You you just nope. absolutely don't know. But I so much, so much OU football stuff. There's just so much going on. But yes, Jackson Arnold's going to be starting in the bowl game, and we're all very, very excited to see how it looks. All right, let's finish up with our winners and losers of the week. But first, John Vance Auto Group has a deal for Oklahoma breakdown listeners. Go to any of their nine full service dealerships in Woodward, Miami, and Guthrie. Tell them we sent you, and they'll give you $500 off. That's $500 off just because you listen to this podcast. We've been serving Oklahomans for 40 years, family-owned and operated. No matter what your vehicle needs are, John Vance Auto Group has you covered. They carry domestic brands such as Ford, Lincoln, Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Wagoneer. John Vance Auto Group's goal is to give unequaled service and to exceed customers' expectations in every way. You can find all the information about their lifetime loyalty program, Browse their entire inventory and find the John Vance dealership near you at vanceautogroup.com. And attention, business owners, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from any insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective, comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. If your business partners with Insurica, you'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. 
If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A.com. And head to the garage for hand-smashed patties, butter-toasted buns, and ice-cold beer. It's the perfect spot to watch any big game. And with all the garage locations being open at 10 p.m. or later every night, it's the go-to late-night spot. Visit eatatthegarage.com to find a location near you and order online from the garage in your neighborhood. As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Well, I'm going to start off with uh, the NFL. Finally, finally, a international game worth uh, a, a destination worth going to. Brazil. Ooh. Brazil is uh, the NFL set to desi- decide on a 2024 Brazil game. And that could come out as early as today as, as far as who's going to be in it and all of those things, if it hasn't already. Also talking about uh, perhaps Spain coming up. Right? They are making a huge push, and, and they have been. This isn't anything new, but they're making a huge push to try and grow the sport internationally. Um, you know, you, you are saturated in the United States. Everybody is a football fan to some degree, right? You're really not going to grow your fan base very much within the borders of our country. If you're going to grow the sport, you're going to have to do it internationally. They've been doing the London games. We saw the Germany game. Spain is coming. Brazil is coming. There's going to be more of this. And whether you like it or not, as a fan with your team going out and playing, uh, it really doesn't matter because they're dead set on trying to grow and generate more revenue. And they're going to have to go internationally for that. So expect more of it, not less. That is, that's exactly right. I, this is where I'm at with the international games. And I, I played in one of the London games and had an awesome time, had way too much fun. We were there for the entire week. It was, whew. but there's a reason they're continuing to do it. They're, they are getting some metrics from that entire experience, whether it's ticket sales, the feedback from those cities internationally. They're continuing to press this because it makes financial sense, or at least that's what, that's my assumption. I don't think mm-hmm. the NFL would continue to do it if they didn't think that it was working. So we'll, we'll see Brazil getting chosen over Spain though. Interesting. I, yeah. I, Barcelona may be the coolest city I've ever been to. I thought it was like the coolest city in the world. I've never been to Madrid, but it is, if you would have played an NFL game in Barcelona or excuse me, Barcelona, I would have, uh, I would have tried to get to that one. It's awesome. I lo- I loved that city, but I'm sure. I'm sure the good people, the Brazilians will be fired up to watch some American football. Do they play American football there? I assume. No, maybe they don't play American football anywhere, but America, but I think they watch it, you know, um, I, it's interesting. I, I don't know why Brazil over, over Spain. I just, I remember the Barcelona dragons, uh, from the, uh, it was it. It wasn't NFL Europe. It was like uh, I don't know. They had it in the they had it in the nineties. Bar- I had football cards from the Barcelona Dragons. Is why I remember. But um, Brazil, huge population. I mean, there's you can get a you can get a new quarterback through free agency or through the draft and sell a bunch of jerseys to your fan base but you're never going to be able to replicate what bringing a new sport, a new team, new players to a country of Brazil that has millions of new people. Right. And if they like, that's what they're trying to, to tap into is, I mean, there's 8 billion people on the planet or 7 billion, whatever it is. And just a very small percentage of that, watch and are fans of American football. Like go watch the like the World Series of Cricket. 
has like billions of people that watch it live compared to like we think our our shows or our games do big numbers it ain't close to what some other sports do so i think that's what they're trying to tap into so back in 2022 is when they assigned different teams to different international countries Mm -hmm. and basically said hey try to grow your brand here try to create more awareness for the nfl here uh the dolphins were assigned to brazil and then the dolphins and bears are assigned to spain is caleb williams about to be like the second most recognized athlete in spain here in a few, in a few years you tell me he's got uh rosetta stone in his amazon basket right now it's going on L- learning some spanish i like yeah. it i we'll we'll see how it goes but uh, from everything I can gather. It seems like the international games are doing well. And it also, it creates that early TV window, which of course the TV partners are thrilled about. I'm looking forward to seeing that Brazilian seven on seven team in the 2028 Olympics. It's going to oh be my awesome. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't get him started. Oh boy. All right. Who do you have as your loser of the week? Uh, you know, Draymond green, I guess. The uh the 360 spinning punch. What is, is is I mean, I know he's always been crazy. He's always been crazy. But it feels like he either is like really gone off the deep end, or the NBA is just like they can't punish him enough that he cares. It's one or the other. Maybe it's both. I don't know. It was, so it is his third ejection in 23 games. Also had this suspension. I don't know, but it feels, it feels like the guy's going through some stuff and maybe it goes all the way back to the Jordan pool video leaking. Maybe he just hasn't recovered from that. Maybe it's all the podcasting. I don't know, man. It is. He's just doing really stupid stuff on the court. Like him doing that to Nurkic, he obviously should be ejected for it. But as dumb as that is, him fouling Chet at the end of the game on the three is like even dumber. And he's had multiple plays like that this year. I mean, the other Oklahoma City game when they were here, the ball's on the rim. Steph Curry's making a layup to win the game, and he goes and touches the ball. I mean, what are you doing, dude? It's like self-sabotage. And he's always been like, what for me personally, he is like the epitome of the type of player that I absolutely hate. I cannot stand players like that. It, everything ends up being about him, whenever, even whenever it's not. We're always babysitting you. You're always getting thrown out of a game whenever we need you. It's always like this, this, you know, uh, you know, something at the end of the game or a mess up here or there. It's always something. Yeah. You give good play in between, but the, the other mistakes are like, they're just killers, man. And it's all done with an arrogance of, I, you can't touch me. You can't tell me what to do. It's just like a poison, man. And he's a hell of a basketball player and he's, you can tell really smart. So I don't understand how you could uh, like why this happens to him. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's I, weird. It's like I don't think anyone, I don't, I don't think know. anyone's surprised at this point. No, it kind of happens. Like, ah, another one for Draymond. Remember the guy cost his team a title with this type of stuff. Yeah. An NBA title. It just, I, I don't know, but clearly him getting ejected from the game is it, it's it doesn't help the team. They lost that game. I mean, they they lost to the Suns, and now you start looking at the Western Conference playoff picture. It's getting hyper competitive in, in the West, 
And Golden State, it feels like they still have one of the best players in the league in Steph Curry, but they are currently, I mean, they're out of the playoff picture. They're the 11 seed right now. You can't be doing stupid stuff that ends up losing you games. And he's done it in, what, two of their last three games? I. What do you I think Steph know. Curry's thinking right now? He's got He's got to be the most frustrated person on the planet because he doesn't do any of that stuff. All right, what? Okay, what is he thinking or what is he doing? Because he's thinking the this this is going to get us beat. This is going to knock us out of the playoffs. This is going to lose us a bunch of money. I mean, he's thinking the same thing everyone else is thinking. What is he doing? He ain't doing shit. None of them are. Everyone is scared to death of him that they're going to get punched in practice. Or they're going to get punched in the locker room. He's a bully that has the entire team and the entire league pressed under his thumb and ain't no one going to do shit about it. And until someone does, he's going to continue the same type of behavior. I mean, there's nothing new. You see this everywhere. That's that's what's happening. Right. I, it's hard to disagree with. We'll see what I will not be surprised if he gets suspended a couple games for it. I mean, how many, how many offenses can you have? So we'll, We'll see, but yeah, the uh, the Warriors are struggling right now, and you just hate to see it. I mean, you absolutely. Hate oh, it's to just see it. it's just brutal, right? I ah. know. It's just I I hate I hate to see it. Meanwhile, the Thunder two seed, no big deal. Woo. No, no big deal. Let's go, boy. Did they put it on them the other night? But they were up thirty eight at one point. No, not a good basketball team, but come on, just. Boys got it rolling a little bit. Now we got the arena thing out of the way. Oh, little glimpse into my winner and loser there. Mm. Let's go. But first. Elevate your tailgate with Chapel Supply and Equipment, Oklahoma City. Chapel Supply and Equipment has generators and inverters on hand that will give you all the power you need so you can take your tailgate to the next level. They're also, they've also got top-of-the-line heaters to keep you warm during those cold tailgates later in the season. They're Oklahoma owned and operated. Elevate your tailgate by calling 405-495-1722 or visit chapelsupply.com. That's C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L supply.com. And First Fidelity Bank knows how to keep fans like you happy. With more than 50 awards in the last five years, including Ford's Best in State Bank, the Oklahoma's Community Choice Awards, and the Journal Records Reader Rankings, it's clear that they are Oklahoma's number one pick for quality banking. And you can find that level of outstanding service and everything FFB offers. Open an account at an award-winning bank today at ffb.com. First Fidelity Bank, we go where you go. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School represents a tradition of educational excellence in Oklahoma City. Grounded in a faith-based education, Bishop McGinnis offers a college prep curriculum that includes 22 AP courses, participation in OSSAA athletics, and numerous clubs and organizations for students to join and grow. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Financial aid is available. And head to opolisclothing.com for our podcast merchandise and the best OU gear out there. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com and use promo code TED, T-E-D for 10% off. That's opolisclothing.com and use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off for my winner of the week. Thought about going with the NBA in season tournament. Anytime a team raises a banner, it makes it a big deal, right? I could not believe that the Lakers are going to put up an NBA in season tournament banner, but it does. It legitimizes the tournament. I do wonder if the NBA strongly suggested this to them and, and they said it's going to look different and there's only going to be one it's going to look different than their title betters but i did not see this coming maybe i should have said but the nba in season tournament championship banner is going to be hanging there at whatever it's called now staple i still call it staple center was it crypto something yeah i how about that 
How about the in-season tournament getting legitimized with the banner? I I don't necessarily mind it. Here's the thing. People have hung banners and celebrated far worse. I mean, for example, 1945 national championship, you know, uh, 80 years later, come on. Right. Uh, so I don't know. Parade. They're going to have a parade with it too. That would be awesome. The in season tournament champion parade. Yes. <laughs> no, I, there it's going to be one banner. If they win more in the future, they're just going to add years to it. But I, in all seriousness, the Lakers putting up a banner for it, it kind of forces every franchise from now on to put a banner up for it. it they, they are the Lakers. So yeah, it, it legitimizes it, or at least that's how it feels to me. Could be wrong. No, I, no, I agree. I agree. But my winner of the week, the city of Oklahoma City, the people have spoken, Ted. A mm. dominant 71-29 to 29 victory for the yes voters on the new arena. I'm so happy. I, I'm so excited, not only for the, the future of the Oklahoma City Thunder, but just what this means for the future of the city as a whole. Uh, it, it, it just felt so massive. Uh, I thought it was one of the most important days in the city's history of, of my lifetime. And I was really confident, but man, did it, it felt so good to see those statements from Adam Silver and Clay Bennett come out and you do, it was like, it's over. We've done it. I'm thrilled, man. Uh, it, it, and it is, it's a relief. Now we can just, we, we can just enjoy this team knowing that they're, they're not going anywhere. And, and that just, yep. it, it, it makes it even more enjoyable with the product that the Oklahoma city thunder is putting on the court right now. I, I could not be happier. Let's go. Yeah, it's awesome. And it just kind of goes to show you that because there was there's a lot of nervous people out there um, because there was a pretty vocal uh, opposition, all right? And that vocal opposition was, was you know, getting quite a bit of, uh, of attention. So the fact that it was so dominant, 71 to 29, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a landslide. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled about it. I think it's awesome. I think, uh, I think it's going to be done right. I think it's going to be something really special and, you know, is as awesome as, uh, you know, the arena we have now has been and how so many people have really, uh, I enjoyed going down there. It's kind of been a part of, of, you know, some younger kids growing up and like, it's going to be cool to see the transition to like bigger, better, I, whenever it's done. And I don't know when, when did they say it's going to be a quick, a quick turnaround. I mean, year, it seems like it's a long ways away, but for everything, it's going to like, they're doing it about as fast as you possibly can. Um, whenever it happens, we're going to have like, one of the best arenas in the country. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember Mayor Holt told us 2029. Yeah. So that feels far away, but for arena of this magnitude, that is, that's moving. And I, I know that some people that will have influence on what this arena is going to look like. They've been doing their research for a long time. They've been going around the country and visiting all these new arenas and saying, we like that. We don't like that. Let's not do this. Let's do this. I can't wait to see what this ends up looking like. And it's going to be awesome. And it's not just the arena itself. It's like the area, what's going to happen with the area around it and how all of that's going to grow for, you know, bars, restaurants, hotels, like all of that stuff, uh, retail. I, I'm just, I'm pumped, man. And yeah. Then you start thinking about how good this team is right now and what that could look like. And that is where you think about the revenue that the arena will drive, right? You're going to have more stuff in the arena that will result in more revenue, not only for the city, but for, for the team. And you've got other factors at work here. You've got the new NBA TV deal that's coming. You've got NBA expansion. 
that's coming. You've got all the all this revenue that's going to be coming into you know coming in for the thunder that hasn't necessarily been there. And it's going to line up perfectly for when we got to pay all these guys. And it it's just one of those things where it's like the timing could be really really good. And this ownership group they've shown they've shown willingness to dip into the tax before. And with all these new revenue streams, I I think it's safe to assume that they're not going to be afraid to do that to continue to have, you know, a a legitimate title contender here in Oklahoma City. It, dude, it's just it's all so exciting. I, I couldn't be happier. It is. It's a you know, you go in waves and we are about to start ramping up. It's gonna be awesome. One last thing on that. And I've talked about this before. My favorite thing about the Thunder is how it brings people in this state together. Growing up here, I'm sure you felt the same thing, Ted. It was always OU and OSU people. You sprinkle some Tulsa people in there, right? But OU and OSU people, it it felt like the people of Oklahoma City versus the people of Tulsa for whatever reason. And this team, I feel like this team brings people in this state together. And I, this is something I was thinking about. I, I was thinking about the impact of the team staying and what that could mean. And obviously my, I've got a two-year-old, loves the Thunder. Wants to go to every game. Talks about Shea. Talks about Chet. Like he, he brings it up like Wants to shoot baskets outside, inside. Tells me every single day he's going to play for the Thunder. So, like, I see that. And I get to experience that with him for who knows how long. And so it is that part of it for me has, like, changed how I view the entire thing. Like, seeing how much it means to my son. And I know a lot of people out there have kids that feel (laughs) the same way about that team but I I was thinking about like okay what what brings people together in this state like the thunder because you've got you've got your OSU people you've got your OU people and I was thinking about my lifetime in the state and the only other thing that I think that has brought people together like the thunder has is tragedies that we have here it's it was weird to think about I was thinking about like the only thing that bring pe- that has brought people truly together the bombing tornado destruction and it's like now we have this team that's going to be here that can bring us all together more and i i just think it i i don't know how you measure that for the state of oklahoma but i don't know it's just hard for me to express how happy i am that I'm going to get to share this with my kids with and just with everyone in this state that cheers for this team. I don't know. It just, it feels so healthy for the state. And, and I know there's an economic impact and people want to talk about the numbers and what, what impact the new arena will have on the economy. And like, is it worth it? All that? And I get that, but I just, I, I think how it brings the state together as a whole, it's, it's worth whatever we end up spending on that arena. Well said. Well said. And I, it's right, you know, and I feel like you may never be able to recapture the original magic you had whenever the Thunder first got here and had that meteoric rise, right? You may never be able to capture that again. But I think, you know, they're about to start going on a run where you get everyone because at that time, everybody was bought in 100 percent. And, you know, it comes and goes a little bit, but they're about to go on a run. It feels like where everybody 100 percent right back in it. It's going to be fun. I'm so excited. (laughs) All right. For my loser of the week. I'm going with people that have been saying Nebraska football is dead. Mm. Ted, do the Cornhuskers have some life here? I think they do. Matt Rule. I, there is 
so much smoke. It almost feels inevitable at this point that the number one quarterback in the 2024 recruiting, 2024 class, recruiting class, Dylan Riola, is going to sign with Nebraska, not Georgia, next week. And if I'm being honest, man, I really hope it happens. I think it would be great. It would obviously be great for Nebraska. I just think it would it would make college football more fun. Georgia's got enough dudes, man. They got all the dudes. Nebraska with a elite quarterback? Come on. Yes, that makes college football more fun in my mind. So you, you clearly have a a good relationship with Dylan's dad. I know him as well. He was on the strength staff when I was in Detroit. You guys played together. A lot of smoke, man. I'm going to be surprised if he doesn't end up signing to Nebraska at this point. It sounds like it to me. Yeah, I was just texting with Dom uh, yesterday about it, and it it sure seems like it's happening. Um, yeah, and you know, his dad was unbelievable player at Nebraska unbelievable player in the NFL. There's a, there's a big time legacy there. His uncle's and the O-line coach. Uncle's the O-line, Donovan. Yeah. Well, he played at Wisconsin, I think. Um, he, he played with Dusty. So Dusty yeah. knows him well. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's good for college football. Honestly, you know, spread, spread the wealth out a little bit. And then also, I to remember and you know kind of ties back to the Stutzman and and Bowman and Downs. I college football is really the last place where where legacy matters a little bit, you know, like in like a a, a kid going to play where his dad played is like like that's part of college football. And when you have something like this, it's you can go to Georgia, who, you know, that's where all the number ones go, right? That's or you can go to a place like it, it's a it's a the story is there. If you go to Georgia and win a bunch of games at Georgia right now, it is are you really going to make your mark? If you go to Nebraska, where they won a national championship when your dad was there. Uh, your dad was a uh, all American. The program has been essentially dead since he left. I mean, I know they've had a couple of, of runs in there, but you go win at Nebraska. I, you cement that last name forever and you don't even have to win a national championship. Probably you just go have a couple of 10 win seasons and make some big bowl games and get yourself in the 12 team playoff. Like that to me is what's good for college football. And I don't even know. I'm rooting for him to sign with Nebraska. I'll just be honest. I don't even know what the domino effect of him choosing Nebraska could be. Let's remember there's another portal window in the spring. If he's in the boat, and has a couple of months to reach out to other guys and the staff can leverage that. I, I don't know. And then you've got the you know, kind of the business perspective of thing. We heard what Matt rule said was the going rate for elite quarterbacks. Hey, I'll tell you right now. And this goes back. This goes back before rule even got the job. I, I was talking to Dom about, like some of the NIL offers they were getting at the time then. And I don't know if people really, I, Nebraska's getting their ducks in a row, but there is huge money behind that program. Huge money. And he he's going to be getting, for lack of a better term, a salary, right? But Nebraska's got nothing else. There's no Nebraska State. There's no NFL team. There's no NBA team. It is the block in, man. He instantly becomes the most famous athlete in the state. 
everyone, and I know that it's not. It doesn't no, have a Jordy massive ball right yeah, behind Jordy, Jordy, Jordy ball. ball and, and Dylan <laughs> Riola. I it is it, it makes him incredibly marketable and incredibly valuable. And he would have had more talent around him at Georgia, but once again, with the way that the portal works, there's nothing stopping Nebraska from loading up on talent to put around him. No, and maybe he's what... got a great left, uh, young left guard that they're bringing in. <laughs> oh boy, could be, could be, but yeah, it seems like the what's it called the 1890 initiative. It seems like they're doing some uh, some work. I saw they're rumored to be the leader to land Julian Fleming, that wide receiver from Ohio State. There's some some stuff that possibly Kyle McCord's going there. I don't know if that makes sense if Riola's in the boat now, but it is it's interesting, man. I it feels like Nebraska is slowly but surely rising from the ashes under Matt Rule. They've and, got all the right things in place for yeah. it to the the recipe is there for it to explode. They just gotta get the right players in and it looks like it's happening slowly but surely. No doubt. Birthday shout outs. Got a couple late entries here, but happy 13th birthday to Garrett Gritty Hollingsworth, which gives you the really hard name. Good luck. Happy birthday to Claire Davis. Oh, okay. <laughs> here we go. Happy 14th birthday to Cooper a fledgy. Okay, yeah. That's what I was going to go with. A F L L E J E. A fle a fledge. A fle a fledge. A fledge. A fledge. A I we tried Cooper. I'm sorry, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then happy 40th birthday to Destiny Hollingsworth. Clearly a big week in the Hollingsworth household. On that episode Episode 379 in the books. We'll have a new podcast that'll drop on Sunday. Just a reminder, you can hear Teddy from 3 to 6 on The Ref. You can hear me from 2 to 5 on Sirius XM Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. Hope you all have an awesome rest of your week. To the people that voted yes in Oklahoma City, thank you. Thank you so much. Until next time, we appreciate you all for listening. and Do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.